Derek's Ouija board was nothing special. Just the mass-produced kind you find at toy stores. A couple of years ago, he lived on campus at UC Berkeley, and his doormates had never used a Ouija board. So one night in October, Derek brought out his. The university has a ton of history, including the displacement of Native Americans and fighters in the civil rights movement. Hoping to make contact with someone famous from history, the five friends put their hands on the planchette and started out by saying, we cautiously call out to any benevolent spirits that would like to communicate with us. As soon as Derek said spirits, the planchette came to life under their hands. Yes. What is your name? Adam Anand. How old are you? Eight. What years did you live? 1948, 1956. Derek continues to tell the story. Then, we asked him a question that required more than a short answer. I forgot what exactly. He started picking out letters. J, E, S, U, and I started thinking, oh, this spirit is going to go on about Jesus. But as he continued, I was shocked. J, E, S, U, I, S. He was speaking French to us. It came as quite a shock to realize the reality of the situation through the Ouija board. I should mention that I was the only one out of all of us that knew any French. So from this point until the end of the session, I kept my eyes on the ceiling to prove to the others that none of us could be controlling the planchette. You really got the impression of a child through this spirit's energy and playfulness. It felt like we were speaking with a child. He sometimes spoke English, mostly French. We spoke English to him though. It was a bit weird thinking about the possibility of a language barrier between our realms and his. He told us that his father was a doctor, that he had a dog named Henri who he loved dearly, and some other kid stuff. We asked him if he lived in Berkeley. Yes. Where? Washington Point. We all shrugged because none of us knew Berkeley all that well. We had all moved here to go to school. If you don't mind telling us, Adam, how did you pass away at such a young age? He responded in French as I stared at the ceiling and my friends announced the letters. F. A. I. M. Hunger. Chills. All of us. It was such a huge moment for all of us when I translated what he said. We also asked, are you at rest in a cemetery? He confirmed that yes, he was and that his headstone was near a tree. I looked up cemeteries in Berkeley and we were all shocked that the oldest cemetery was called Washington Point, just where Adam said he'd lived at the beginning of the session. Eventually, the session began winding down and the planchette moved more and more sluggishly. We had to say goodbye. It was heartwarming to talk to such a young and happy seeming spirit, yet obviously gave us a huge case of the willies also. He gave us a lot of information. We had to look into it. A few days later, we paid a visit to Washington Point Cemetery. It was a day or two before Halloween. At Washington Point Cemetery, 
There are old, weathered, discolored, slanting headstones covering the place. We started looking around for the smaller ones because we figured that children would have correspondingly small headstones. Though the vast majority of the stones are too weathered to make out the words that were on them. There are a few in particular we suspected to be his. Small ones near trees, near other members of the Anon family. Even one small headstone bore the initials AA and the epitaph, taken too young, stomach cancer. This blew us away. Adam said he died of hunger. Wouldn't stomach cancer have made eating terribly hard for him? We paid our respects and left. To this day, says Derek, this is the most gratifying Ouija board experience I've ever had. Derek says he'd like to contact Adam again, but he hopes he is at peace. James said, I always thought these things were BS. However, years ago, this changed when I did it once with some random people at a get-together. We were talking to all sorts of different spirits. I wasn't taking any of it seriously. Then I thought of a way to put this to the test. I'm Swedish-American. I was born in Sweden, so I know Swedish. And I knew the friend of my brother that had passed away recently. So I asked to speak with him. Now, only one person knew me at the get-together, and even then, they didn't know that much about me. I was definitely the only one who could speak Swedish. And I was in Oklahoma at the time. So I asked in Swedish how he died. The board spelled out car crash. I was a bit shocked, but still didn't buy it completely. So I asked a more detailed question. I asked in Swedish how old he was when he died. It pointed to one and then three. That's when I started really freaking out. No one would have ever known these details, let alone understood what I was asking. I asked for more details on the crash, and after that I stopped. And I haven't touched a Ouija board since. Dave said, My ex-girlfriend and her friends used one when they were around 16. This being two years after her dad died. She'd kind of closed herself off, so it was nice that she was making friends again. I was on the phone with her while her friends were using it in the background. They'd already contacted a few entities, allegedly. So she was telling me about it. And I could hear her friends laughing in the background. Then suddenly the laughing stopped. One of the girls said to my ex, Is your dad named James? She hadn't told these girls about her dad yet, so it was weird. But she told them that yes, her dad's name is James. Then they said a few things and she told me she'd call me back. From what she told me after, the girls had contacted a man named James. They'd asked who he was and when he died. He replied, Dad, two years. They asked why he was here and he said, daughter. They asked her name and he said her name. That's when they stopped laughing. After she hung up, she started asking questions, but not touching the board in any way to discern if it was them fooling around. She asked him, what was the nickname her dad used to call her when she was a little girl? The board spelled out S W E E. P E 
A, sweet pea. And that's when she burst into tears. It was the nickname her father called her when she was a little girl. She never used a Ouija board again. I'm Tiffany Jean. Please like and subscribe.